and welcome to Why the Book Wins. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are not subscribed to my channel, I'd love it so much if you subscribe. I do book first movie content as well as book collection videos, which is what today's video is, as well as other like random book content, sometimes movie content as well. And then my book first movie episodes are also available as a podcast if you would rather listen to them instead of having to like watch the YouTube video. But anyway, I actually just recorded this video but then the audio through my mic wasn't getting it because like at some point I picked up a book and I guess I stopped recording and the mic audio really does make such a difference. So I am refilming the video. Luckily it's a short one, so it's not too bad. Anyhow, today's video, I am showing you the books I have spent the most money on, my most valuable books, my most expensive books. And I guess we can just get right into it, starting with The Power of the Dog by Thomas Savage. And now if you are familiar with my YouTube channel and if you have watched my monthly wrap-ups, you will know that I read The Power of the Dog in January and I loved it so, so much. I have a book first movie for it. The movie is also just incredible. Both of them are just wonderful. After I read the book in January, I wanted a first edition copy. So I looked it up and I saw it for sale for $2,500. And I was like, I can't spend that much money on a book. That is insane. Which if you've spent that much money on a book, I'm not saying you're insane, <laughs> but I just didn't want to spend that much money. But then like a few weeks later, I saw it for sale on eBay and it was a bid and the starting bid was 250, which compared to 2,500 is a steal. So I bid on it. But then in the last few minutes, the bid just shot up and it ended up selling for like over a thousand dollars and I lost it. So that was just really disappointing. And throughout the next few months, I would periodically check eBay and A books and you know, all the other places to see if there was one available. There's one that has been for sale for months now for $3,500 and they haven't lowered the price, but no one's buying it. <laughs> but I also saw it for sale again for 2,500. And yeah, I just couldn't pay that much money for a book. And so I didn't. I did see it available like a month ago. Once again, it was a bid and the starting bid was 1,000 or you could just buy now for 1,300. But again, I was just like, I can't spend that much money. That's just so much money for one book. So I didn't do anything. However, the next day it was gone. So someone did the buy now offer and they paid the $1,300 and I was like, dang it, that's a lot of money. But compared to the other prices, 1300 was actually kind of a deal. So I was disappointed and I was like, man, I'm never gonna see it for that cheap again. And I even messaged the person selling it for 2,500, trying to haggle. The lowest they would go though is 2,000 and I said no, <laughs> but, the other week, I saw it for sale once again on eBay and it was available to bid on starting bid 250 or you could make an offer. And I did not want to go through the bidding process again, especially what happened in January and it was a seven day bid and I just didn't feel like waiting. So then I made them an offer not much higher than the 250 starting bid price. I didn't think they would accept it, but they did. <laughs> so I got it for an amazing deal. It is a former library copy, but I don't know, I kind of like having former library copies. Like it's just kind of cool to think of how many people have read this exact copy through the decades. This book is from 1967, which honestly like isn't that old. But the reason it's so much money is because it's it was only printed like once and they had a limited number of copies because Thomas Savage just wasn't a big author. And then it wasn't reprinted again until decades later. So this first edition copy is very rare because there are not many copies of it in the world. Anyway, even though I did get this for like a great deal, it still is one of the more expensive books I have bought. And yeah, it just came in the other day and I'm so happy to have it. and. I have been wanting to own this book for months now, ever since January. So it is exciting to finally have a copy and I highly recommend it. It's amazing. So yeah, that is the first book on my list. And next up is my Folio Society edition of Beloved. It does come in a bookcase, a slipcase, as all Folio Society books do. This one though is just plain black. I like it when they have a design. Not many of them do, but anyway. So the cover of this one is so cool. I love it so much. And this one also kind of has a story with it. So I read this book last year. It is incredible. It is a tough one to read. Uh, it can be uncomfortable. It's yeah, it's a difficult read, but it's so rewarding and so worth it. And Toni Morrison is a beautiful writer. When I did a book first movie episode for this, which the movie is good. It is a faithful adaptation, but the book, because of Morrison's writing, you just, uh, get so much from the book. In the book first movie episode I did for it, I shared so many quotes from the book because there were just so many powerful passages. This is the only Morrison book I've read so far. I keep meaning to read more, but she does write heavy books. And so you have to be prepared 
for a heavy story. Anyway, so after I read this book, I saw that Folio Society had an edition. However, it was being sold for $300. And I was like, that's so much money. I can't spend that much money on a book. And then I did later see it as an Easton Press edition, which I have somewhere up there. And so I had the Easton Press edition and I was like, you know what, this is good enough. At least I have Easton Press. I could have bought the first edition copy, but honestly, that wasn't, you know, certain books just call to you. And the first edition copy of Beloved didn't call to me. Like it's just kind of a boring cover and I, and it's not so old that a first edition copy is super special. And anyway, so I don't own a first edition, edition copy of Beloved. This one was available for 300 and it was available for a little while. However, eventually it was bought. So then I kind of regretted not getting it because once that copy was sold, like it is so hard to come across this copy. And so then I was disappointed that I didn't buy it because then for months, I just never saw it available until I think it was like January, it was earlier this year, someone, a different seller was once again selling it for 300 and I messaged them and I made an offer. I forget how much it was, but they replied saying no and they wouldn't go below the asking price. And so I replied being like, Okay, then I'll have to pass. And then it was either later that same day or the next day, they like sent me a counter offer or like sent me an offer for the offer I had made to them. <laughs> so they just decided that they would go for it. So I bought it <laughs> and I am so happy to have it because yeah, this book is incredible and this edition is amazing. And now that I have Beloved and Easton Press and Folio Society, I'm happy with that. Like I said, I don't have an interest in the first edition. And there is a cool Barnes and Noble edition, but again, I just, I don't feel the need to buy it. I haven't shown this book in detail in a video, but I will be having a Folio Society book video coming out in a couple of weeks and I will show this one more in detail with the illustrations. But since I have it out right now, I will show you one real quick. So here's one. And now based on the giant empty space right there, you already know what, uh, what the next book is I'm talking about. And that is my deluxe Easton Press edition of Frankenstein. So deluxe editions, Easton Press deluxe editions are definitely very different from regular Easton Press. They are just so intricate and so amazing. And they have illustrators specifically like those Easton Press books, they just take a book that's already been printed and just reprint it and bind it on better paper and leather and all of that. Whereas this, they got an illustrator to make brand new illustrations for this book. And yeah, their deluxe editions are just so beautiful and intricate and just amazing. And I have a whole video showing off this book if you want to see all the details of it. But since I have it here, you know, I'll show you one picture. So this very first one right here is really cool. Sorry, it's tough to hold, but... Uh, yeah, in the video I have for this, I am holding the camera as I show you the book. So it's you, you can appreciate the book a bit better in that video. Anyway, I bought this one directly from the Easton Press website. People are trying to sell this on eBay for way more money when you could just buy it for cheaper off the Easton Press website. And again, all of these books, obviously I highly recommend. I wouldn't have spent this much money on any book if I didn't love it. And Frankenstein, which I talk about in my video for this book, this is the book I have read the most, <laughs> which, I'm kind of surprised by that, but I guess not really because it is an amazing book and I will be reading it again this year. When I do a book versus movie, I will compare it with uh, the Kenneth Branagh movie. But yeah, amazing book, highly recommend. And this edition, I cannot recommend Easton Press Deluxe Editions enough. They are one of my top three favorite publishing houses types of books. They are just so beautiful. I would love to get the deluxe Easton Press edition of The Phantom of the Opera. I That is one I have my eye on and I periodically check for. It is available on eBay. There's three different sellers. However, all of those sellers are like official booksellers and they're selling it for $700, which I am not willing to pay. So I keep waiting for just like a random person like myself who just happens to be selling their books and selling it for a cheaper price. So here's hoping I find it for sale at some point. And then next up is another book I have a whole dedicated video for if you want to see like a more detailed in-depth look into it. And that is my Suntup Press edition of Misery. So amazing. You know I love when the sleeves have a decoration or an image on them. But this is the most I have spent on a book, but it was so worth it because not only do I just love this book, which if you're familiar with my YouTube channel, I talk about this one a fair amount, it seems like, but I just love this book so much for so many reasons. But this edition as well is just one of the most detailed, intricate, beautifully done books that I own. Like, uh, I just love it so much. I do own one other Santa book. It is 
just right there, and that is a scanner darkly. However, that one was cheaper, and so it doesn't make the cut for this video, and it isn't quite as intricate as this one is. This one is an artist edition, but I believe that one is too. I Like I said, I have a whole video for this if you wanna see it, but since we're here right now, I will go ahead and show you a picture. So this is a really cool one. And they have ink drawings in here as well. And they're done, the ink drawings and the paintings are done by two different artists. And yeah, definitely check out that video where I show this in depth because this is just such an amazing addition. Suntup Press, Easton Press Deluxe, and Folio Society are three of my favorite publishing houses. I, they're just so detailed and I love the illustrations and I love them so much. I would love to get more Suntup Press editions, but so, so far I only have two. They do only publish books that are like weird or scary or sci-fi in some way. And they also seem to sell out quickly from the website. So chances are you'll end up buying one through like a resell, which on eBay, which is where I got both of mine. And they did post that they're gonna be coming out with an, ed an edition of The Omen, which I personally <laughs> don't want to read. I think it would be too scary for me, but if that interests you, then you should buy it from the website once it's released because it's cheaper to buy it directly from them rather than buying it from a reseller. But I did recently talk about The Last House on Needless Street in my video about weird books written by women, and that would be a great one for Suntup to do. So I actually messaged them. I don't know how that works, but I was like, hey, this you should you know look into this book. So that would be so cool if they did that edition. There is this other illustrated edition of Needless Street. I forget the publishing house, but I will probably be buying that one to add to my collection because that was such an amazing book and I'm a sucker for limited editions, special editions, and illustrated editions. Which brings me to the last book in this video. And this is a book I talked about in my video where I said I had buyer's remorse because I had buyer's remorse when I bought this book. And it is the Cemetery Dance edition of The Shining. The Shining is one of my favorite Stephen King books. Misery and The Shining are my top two. However, I don't know, like this edition just isn't as intricate as the Misery edition. And so when I bought it, I was just like, ugh, like, I, I don't know, is this worth it? Ultimately, I decided to keep it because I did get it for a better price than most people are selling it for. Like people sell it for like seven or $800. And I got it for cheaper than that. So I decided to keep it and I do love the book itself. I do not have a dedicated video for this book. If you think I should make one, then comment down below and I will. But I will show you an illustration if you would like. Obviously you have that one right there on the cover, which is really nice. So, sorry, this is like a heavy one to hold, but we have that, you know, that moment with Danny looking in the tub. So I would say if you find this edition available for like $500 or less, I would say it's worth it. But more than that, like, I, I don't think it is, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Like, I don't know, the illustrations are amazing and it is clearly very well done. It's just not as intricate and detailed as the Misery edition. And yet this one sells for like the same price, which just doesn't make sense to me. But this book itself is obviously one of King's more famous works. So maybe that's why it's selling for more. And that wraps it up as far as the most expensive books I have bought. I do prefer the books, like the majority of these were like limited editions, special editions, illustrated editions. Power of the Dog was the only one that was just like a rare older book. And that one, like I was anticipating that buying that book for so long. And then once I got it, like there's not much to do with it. <laughs> you just put it on yourself. Whereas Easton Press and Folio and Suntup, like once you get it, there's just so much to flip through and look at and admire. So I do prefer spending more money on books that I can just appreciate more. I'm so happy I owned that edition of Power of the Dog, but yeah, like once I got it, <laughs> it's just like, oh, time to put it on the bookshelf and that's that really. So I do prefer spending money on the illustrated books. But yeah, let me know what some of your favorite publishing houses are, what are some of the most expensive books you have bought, and don't forget to subscribe and like this video and let me know which of the books that I shared you were most impressed by. And yeah, you can check out my video for Misery and for Frankenstein and that wraps it up. Follow me on Instagram, on Goodreads and all of that good stuff. And I will see you next time. Bye.